my friend and welcome back to the garden today we are building the spring project list let's go out to the garden and take a look at what we've got so i was out here earlier and i'm just kind of taking a look around now that the weather is starting to get a little bit nicer and it's time to really look at the garden and put some things in a list of to-dos so I can prioritize them and figure out what the main projects are for this spring. All right, I think the most obvious to-do is to address this. <laughs> okay, so this was a approximately three and a half by a little bit longer than five feet door. Uh, that I picked up from a buy nothing group that I am going to make into essentially a, a cage, I guess. So my thought process is I am going to make it about three feet to four feet tall with a hinged opening over the top of it so that I can open it and reach down into it and I'll put quarter inch hardware cloth around it. So this will work if I eventually get a uh, quail. I will be able to keep the quail in here in one of these raised beds or it'll just hopefully keep the rabbits out so that I can uh, plant blueberry bushes because they are eating my blueberry bushes every year. I have not gotten successful blueberries yet because they love chewing on all the new green growth on the blueberries, so they just eat them down to little nubs. So yeah, that's one project. That is the first project on the list. Okay, so the second project on the list is a little less obvious, but if we look over here, we've got my pear trees. One, my largest, most beautiful pear that just shot up and did amazing. And then my other pear over here, a little bit smaller. It's probably about two years behind. I got a more developed, older tree. This is about a three or four year old tree here. So it was ready and raring to go. And what I really need to do here is to train these branches. And I'm gonna what do what's called espalier. Uh, and I'll put that up on the screen with the definition, but basically you are uh, moving the branches uh, and tying them in place so that they, when they firm up their growth, uh, they just permanently stay uh, shaped like that. And I'm gonna get a little bit creative with this one, more non-traditional. This is also my first time doing anything espalier, so I'm giving myself uh, permission for creativity <laughs> when I'm trying this. But I'm essentially, if we turn the camera back around, I'm going to wrap it around and then wrap it around again here creating a fence if you will a living fence around the raised bed now these posts one two three and then four that one i don't like them uh they are not like the t posts that i have over there which are fantastic uh so i want to pick up more of those i think they're like seven foot uh posts because i also have the post hole um uh slammer thingy <laughs> That's not the technical definition, but you know what I mean. I have the tool uh, to bang the posts into the ground. The tool that I have is too narrow because it's built for the narrow T posts and these are wider, so I can't use uh, that tool for this. And it's just been a pain in the ass because I can't get them deep enough into the soil. So I'm just gonna take them out, replace them. And then that way I'll be able to espalier not only the pear trees over here, but the elderberries. So there's one here and then a bunch uh, from this sunflower that fell down. It's covering a bunch of branches over there as well. And then this one just shot straight up from the bare root uh, this past year. So it'll put off more side shoots. I'll probably cut it at the top so it doesn't get any taller. And then we'll just prune it out from side shoots and see what happens. I don't know. I don't really know the growth pattern of elderberries, but I do know that they can get extremely big. So we will want to keep, uh, try to keep the size of this in check so that it is uh, not as huge. I really don't want them any taller than five feet because I am only about five feet. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not about to try and bring a ladder out here. Ooh, do you see this? My scarf and my dress just got caught in my raspberry. Oh my goodness, let go of me. 
Oh, and my gooseberry. Jeez, guys. It's a mutiny in the garden. So another project that I would like to get done is I have more of these white trellises. What I would really like to do is put more of them here in the garden and create fun, fun shapes to play with, if you will. So I'm thinking of putting some in between beds to do an arch so that as we walk down here, we'll have an arch maybe in these two beds here and I can do another one in here across long ways similar to how I did over on this bed so that could be fun and then I could put because I think they're wide enough I could put an arch over in front of the garden gate and I would probably do it the shorter wider style over on this side and have it span farther across but the problem with that is that this is uneven, uh, extremely uneven. <laughs> so I might put it in large pots so that on uh, one side I can put it deeper and it'll look to the eye, it'll look more even maybe, I don't know. That's the third project on the list though, getting these uh, white trellises. I have three more arches that I need to put up. So I would like to do that this spring. All right, last but not least is addressing Carl's living space here, the pond. I would like to make the pond area bigger this year by using the existing 20 gallon round pond liners that I have. I have one of them in the corner and I have another one back there. But what I'm thinking of doing is digging the rest of this area out and cutting four inch holes in them and connecting them with uh, with four inch tubing or even PVC, siliconing it in, but basically connecting the 20 gallon, those two 20 gallons into the 30 gallon round that I have here, expanding that into a 70 gallon pond and being able to hopefully have more fish, more plants, uh, in a more biodiverse habitat in this area of the garden, which will be really cool. And I really like got super into ponds after this. So, and I'm just so glad that Carl's made it. So I want to expand this and make this a, uh, a better home for Carl. And hopefully if I am savvy enough and able to do it, once the ground fully thaws out in the summer, I'd like to dig a trench and uh, and run line for a permanent pond pump so that uh, we have the solar pond pump in here, uh, but that I'll be able to add another pond pump in here and maybe do a waterfall situation of, or fountain of some sort in here, but have something that will permanently, no matter what, move the water and keep it going because I think that'll uh, oxidize it more and allow us to maybe have more than one fish uh, in the pond that will survive, <laughs> so. That's my hopes for that. Okay, so my fifth and final project of, uh, of the year that I'd like to tackle is probably this fence. I did paint this with a cedar colored stain and absolutely hated it. I hate how orangey it is. And I've decided that I wanna repaint all of this white. I want it to be a cliche little white picket fence around the garden and I might get creative and uh, and change it up but in general just repaint redo this um, and then that way it'll match the white arches that I have in the garden and it'll all kind of be cohesive so fifth and final project I think I said final on the fourth one but fifth and final project is to repaint the fence thankfully it is a dig-in fence so it will be easy to remove each panel uh, one at a time, paint it, and go uh, go through the ball. So um, they're not cemented in or anything like that. So it won't be too much of a hassle. And by doing that, maybe it'll allow me to uh, get access into this sort of border area of the fence and really redo it and beautify it and make it a little bit better. I do have. Uh, it's some daylilies that I got from a local daylily farm in here. But I would like to put more daylilies, more flowers, um, maybe daffodils or something like that in here uh, this fall. We'll figure something out. But I gotta plant, I gotta plant these pots, you guys. 
All right, friends, so that's what I'm thinking. Those are the five projects that I would like to accomplish, not just this spring, but throughout the gardening season. And we'll reevaluate in the summer if I have any, or any energy. If I've managed to complete those five, we'll add more to my plate. But I think that's a pretty good head start for the gardening season. And I'm just really excited to get in there and get to it. It's just so nice. Only in February do you walk outside in 48 degrees sunny weather and go, oh, it's so nice out. I don't even need a jacket. It's 48 degrees, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today, friends. I'll catch you next time. Bye.